Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm going to do a little experimenting and do some short form videos that are, while they're not workflows, they are a way for me to express, I think, what makes particular images either special because of the choices that were made or the techniques that were used. It's a way to just think about approaching particular kinds of processing. Sometimes it's about the object, sometimes it's about the data itself. So this example is going to be about narrowband image processing. And most recently, I've been getting some uh, comments that the images that I'm producing look different. And I just want to address that. I want to talk about what the differences are and how I approached um, implementing them in my processing. So join me and see if this kind of video is the type that you'd like to see more of. And I appreciate you watching. Thanks. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two different objects I recently took a picture of, and though they are very different objects, they are related in a very particular way that I think is instructive to, to highlight. This is an image of NGC 346. It's in the small Magellanic cloud, and what is interesting about this object is that it is dominated by emission in O3, not HA, not in hydrogen alpha. And what's interesting about that is that typically when you see people uh, take pictures of nebula, Wherever there is the weaker emission line, say it is the O3, as is typical, or S2, you know, people will, part of the game is to raise the significance, make more visible those weaker channels, that weaker signal. But if you look at when people are approached with a galactic nebula like this, that is brightest in O3, if you just look at what generally people publish, they'll keep the O3. They will not regard the hydrogen alpha as the weaker channel. And I find that interesting. Planetary nebula people will do it. They'll, it's obviously that strong in O3. And where there is HA, people want to bring that out. But not in galactic nebula. It seems inconsistent to me. And so I approach this with the same uh, mindset as if I were doing any galactic nebula. And I just, you know, reverse the fact that the hydrogen alpha was the weaker channel. So this image may look different to people. But in my mind, I'm actually being consistent in that I'm approaching it in the same way I would approach any object. Uh, I take the weaker channels, especially if they provide some information, and I'm raising their significance. In this particular case, what's nice is that by showing more of the red, I can trace some of these ionization fronts that are within the nebula. And I think they're really interesting, but they're very, very subtle. So let me actually show you what I mean. This is basically the raw HOO image. If you just put everything together, it's kind of what you get, right? It's, uh, it's pretty strong in hydrogen alpha, excuse me, in the O3. You can see the hydrogen alpha, though. I mean, so I knew that it was running, weaving through this nebulosity. I can see some here, here, and even in here, I can see how it's changing the color of the O3, though it's very, very subtle. And so I wanted to try to find a way to make that show up a little bit better. And then as I worked towards that, for example, here, you're looking at the result of me doing two things. I used, you know, narrowband normalization to achieve this red and get close to this teal color, but I was sure to make the red, you know, uh, the hydrogen alpha then uh, much more prominent. Uh, and at this point, I also did some contrast adjustments. I think I used uh, local histogram equalization at this point, things like that. Uh, and then at the end of the day, after doing everything I thought I possibly could with this, you know, the color saturation and making everything stand out as much as I could to see the various structures, I, I was happy with this. This is an image I thought, okay, um, I, I'm, I must be on the home stretch now. All I have to do are add, you know, my RGB stars. That's all I have to do at this point. Um, and I do have RGB stars. I also took RGB data. What's interesting is in the RGB, this nebula, it's fairly bright, but again, it just comes off looking like a fairly green blue. You can see a little bit of red in there, but it's actually not very strong at all. So the the broadband data didn't really add anything as far as the nebula is concerned. All I did in this case was stole the stars. So let me show you what I mean by that. That was really the second challenge, and I didn't realize it was going to be a challenge. So here, um, the first challenge was showing that HA and doing so in a way that I thought was reasonable all the way into the heart of the nebula. Uh, here are the stars. Now the stars represented another element that I needed to keep in here. We have some of these clusters that you see in the field, and in particular, the ones that are behind the nebula, or this one's part of the nebula, this one's in the background. You can see how reddened it is. Um, I wanted to be sure that those showed up as well. So that was also, I added that to the list of what I visualized in my head at the end of the day 
I, I wanted that to be true. And so the next thing I did is I went to combine these two, screen these stars that I stole from the RGB with that color image that I, you know, I have now. And this is what you get. This looks washed out. It looks as if I have two backgrounds, basically. It looks as if the star only image has some kind of background that's being applied here and washing everything out. The funny thing is, that's not the case. And just add the stars. It's almost like there is a, a sky brightness, but there isn't any. That's what's bizarre. So at the end of the day, when I processed everything, I had to really increase the contrast, like a lot, uh, more than you would normally do for the nebula to make it show up. Um, and then be in some way balanced with the stars. You can see the cluster in the background as well as the other cluster. And uh, obviously the one that's in the lower right is no problem at all. Um, but then again, also show all of this uh, hydrogen alpha emission running through the nebula. So that's the thought process that I had in this particular image. Now there's a similar thought process for the second image. The second object I'd like to point out is IC5148. It is related in a particular way to the one we just looked at, uh, NGC 346, because of the approach that I did. And by the way, I actually think that this is the best um, astrophotographic picture I think I've ever created. It's a, it, I really, really like this one. I like the colors. I like the choices that I made. I just, everything was good here. It wasn't easy to do, but everything was really nice. And I'd like to show you one element uh, that made it somewhat difficult, right? If you look at the O3, it is super, super bright. <laughs> and then if you look at the HA, there's uh, hydrogen alpha there as well. So let me show you what, uh, I'll just show you the, um, the RGB. This is an RGB image, very typical image of this planetary nebula. And you can see what dominates is, of course, the O3 emission. Now, this is broadband. Um, if I show you the HOO image, I mean, it just looks completely, whatever color you made, Blue and green, you know, whatever ratio you use, that's what color it is. Because the HA is there, but it is just so incredibly subtle. So I don't think people in general would have a problem with, you know, trying to show in this case, the weaker channel against this brighter channel. I want that to have a greater contribution. And that's why you have many of these, you know, there's a four ax technique and all the others which try to balance where two, two opposing, or not opposing, but two emission lines where one is dominating the other are overlapping then you can make a choice as to which of the weaker channels um, you know you want to show. So that, this is the similar approach, just like in the previous object, but I did a different way, and I'd like to show you that way. So you know how to do continuum subtraction. If you don't, this is one of the items that I cover in my course, where you can subtract the continuum of, like, say, stars in a galaxy to show you just the emission line of the hydrogen alpha, for example, uh, showing up in that galaxy. Very important to do so you get the contrast. Well, I just thought to myself, I can use, obviously, that same technique to take the difference between these two. Now, I don't take a straight-up difference. That wouldn't work. I need to scale the HA and take that difference uh, with the O3. Now, how do I know how far to go? Well, really what I want is I want to scale it up until just that point that they're pretty much equal. The, the uh, HA and the O3 are fairly similar, and the difference is just going to show me anything that is a little bit in excess of the O3. And that's going to be the HA signal that I want to get. And so when you do that subtraction, this is what you get. This is basically, mostly, the HA contribution, because I've subtracted off almost all of the O3 after scaling the HA, right? But I've subtracted off as much of the O3 as I can. And it's these features, then, that I want to show up as much as possible in the final result. So that's what I work towards. Now, it's, it's no easy task. Here is that intermediate result. Now, this is only the bright part. You can't even see here the uh, very faint part. It's there in the O3, but it's, it's very hard to see. But I knew, again, once I saw this image, that um, I knew I was on the right track. Because to me, this, this really is what I was looking for. Again, in my mind's eye, I wanted something along these lines. Uh, what I also did here, which should be a little obvious, is that I chose not to make it red. I didn't th I just, red just doesn't go with that kind of blue teal. I thought something a little more peachy would be nice. And so I didn't go with red, and it's more of an orange red, uh, I think is a, is a better choice here for the mapping of the uh, HA. And then you need to blend, obviously, two versions of this, um, or stretch it in some particular way so that you can get the, the very faintest parts and still see uh, the bright part. So those are the steps that I took. And then, of course, at the very, very end, we're going to end up with the final result, 
that looks like this. We've added in the stars. I've put as much contrast as I can. I've done everything possible. Uh, but this was only possible because, again, I am regarding the weaker channel, in this case the HA, which is more unusual, and trying to find a way to bring it up to show as many elements of this object as I can. And, and by the way, you can see that the contribution here in HA, it's there, uh, but it's not as bright as here. And I, and I didn't use the subtraction technique uh, like I did here. So you'll see that it, and I left it, you know, more of that pink color um, for this particular, where it overlaps here. Uh, and I thought, hey, that's fine. Just adds another little bit of a color. Uh, this is too faint to do any kind of subtraction or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video of pointing out two objects and a different uh, way of thinking about them, especially when the weaker channel is kind of the unexpected one, when it's the hydrogen alpha one. And uh, it's really using the same principles you would normally do, but when applied to images like this and like the other I showed, it gives a result which is often different than expected, but I don't think it should be. I think this is exactly the expectation that uh, you, would, you would do when you approach it in this same way.